Now, today, uh, uh, actually, I am going to explain the text. ล่าสุดที่มั้งวะล่าล่าสุดที่มั้งเป็นตัวจุดที่เป็นตัวจุดที่เป็นตัวจุดที่น่ะเดี๋ยวน่ะน่าเดี๋ยวน่าเดี
cannot subdue mental level of worry or stress or pain. Uh, other hand, if you see the person have you see uh, some ability to develop uh, mental peace, not through sensorial experiences, but through mental level, then that first day long lasting. Secondly, very, very powerful. So mental level of peace or satisfaction can subdue physical level difficulties or sensory levels sort of because of the problems. Uh, problems. So now mental level, key things. Too much self-centered attitude. Automatically, one's think of oneself. Then they, you can't see the wider perspective. Just me, 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 me like that. Uh, so then, uh, that really, you see, creates a lot of problem. I think yesterday also I sort of I think mentioned. So it seems to me all major religious tradition is to recognize that. So now, for example, the concept of God creator also you see immense help to reduce self-centered arrogance. We are nothing but creature of God. So it's more sort of because of the stress, creator, God as a creator that automatically reduce self-centered because the arrogance is hmm. uh, I think two ways. One way, simply you see the single faith towards God reduce that. And secondly, the God consider as an infinite love. So more close feeling with God, you see, you naturally to follow or practice or consider importance of your love, right? Like that. So I just one thing. Now, uh, Buddhist tradition, Buddhist practice, the I say the faith towards God, towards Buddha, Dharma, Buddha. Uh, similar sort of that because of the effect. Uh, effect. Uh, similar sort of effect. Uh, but then, then Buddha consider as a teacher, not a real protector. Buddha himself, you see, told his follower, "You are your own master. Everything depends on yourself." Buddha's work is show the path. So main responsibility is on your own sh sh shoulder. Uh, so, what do you think? Buddha a little bit selfish? <laughs> or blame put on <laughs> practitioner's shoulder? <laughs> he never say your future as in my hand. He never said that. If you praise to me, if you sort of Kasota, worship me, you get everything. He never said that. So only through your own training of mind, your own practice. So he say, uh, you are your own master. So you are your own masters. Tanyi Dagan Gwenji, Shantu Sushi Kasa. So the Buddha has said that you are your own master, who else will be your master? Mm. So then the Dharma become very important. Uh, so Dharma is the real protector. Dharma considered medicine. 
Buddha consider doctor. Doctor is a cannot cure, just a meeting doctor, only medicine. So Buddha like doctor or teacher. His teaching Dharma is the medicine. Uh, teaching the lunga dhamma the dhamma dhamma ni. So within the teaching, um, we can um, categorize those of the scriptural or the spoken teachings, and then um, also the realizations, the experiences that you, you develop. Lunga dhamma dhamma dhamma. No. Lunga dhamma 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 ni. So lunga dhamma is the tenor sum di lunga dhamma. No, so scriptural teachings uh, comprise the three uh, baskets, the three collections of teachings. Yes. And then the, the realizational t- uh, teachings um, uh, comprise the three trainings. Yes. So with regard to these three trainings, uh, they are common um, to both the Buddhist and non-Buddhist traditions. Um, I th- all I think Indian traditions, no, same. All, um, all the Indian um, uh, religious traditions, these are all common. Um, whereas now when it comes within the context of uh, under, uh, the practice of uh, doing these three practices, um, within the uh, understanding of selflessness, anatomy uh, theory, then it becomes uh, higher trainings. Mm-hmm. <coughs> so then, the uh, Kasa scriptural teachings. Uh, that's what there was. The prescription yes. uh. So the uh, scriptural teachings um, are like giving prescription. Oh, uh-huh. the real medicine, the top of the body. Nice. And then the realizations that you develop through these teachings um, become the actual, uh, the, the uh, realizational teachings. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So once we uh, develop awareness, I, I think I, I think I may say I may say it this way: uh, the way Buddha, you see, explained four noble truth. The actually, when he taught. Uh So, um, so when the Buddha gave his teaching uh, in the first sermon, and um, the, four, the teaching on the Four Noble Truths, um, actually the Four Noble Truths were taught um, in a three um, kind of sets. Um, first, the Buddha um, taught about the, the, the actual nature of the Four Noble Truths. Um, so this is uh, uh, this has nothing to do with uh, moral issues as such. Nature of four noble truths, Mahare. Not that way. Oh. I think nature of suffering and kasota uh, origin, permanent sort of happiness. So then, when explain these two things uh, again. No creator uh, or cumulichum, did you say the cumulichum? Here, Ari Asanga mentioned your baby, Jane, Midabe Jane, Nube Jane's Jane's from Shiloh. So, since pain and pleasure um, are not, I mean, do not come without causes. 
Uh, therefore, Arya Asanga has uh, actually uh, given these three types of causes or conditions, which are called the unwavering condition, and then uh, impermanent changing condition, and then the potential condition. The dolia tidoa, any diebe dinju, dikebe dike, kang mariguyana, and dushi sesunsha, tungen dushi vele. And so in, this, in a sutra, it is mentioned, or it is said uh, that uh, uh, if when this exists, that arises. And uh, then um, th that also comes. And then when th uh, this arises, that also arises. And uh, therefore, um, when, uh, uh, if when there is ignorance, ignorance, then there is suffering. Uh, so these are just explain the reality. Yes. And therefore, um, within this context, uh, what, is, what the Buddha has taught is the, the reality of how things are. So, uh, they basically, you see, Buddha state, suffering, and pressure, you see, come. The yes. Yes. So, uh, pain and pleasure do not come without causes. Uh, you may be changing any uh the order that and so the co uh, these uh, pain and pleasure, these experiences do not come from some kind of unchanging permanent cause. That did tangjim de uh so dubri sak, so tapa dubarwa, so tapa dubarwa, chasanga takwe dulecho maris. So what this counters is the belief or the philosophical assertion um, of the Sankhya school of philosophy, um, um, where they say She just saying a share. No. She just saying a nun, eh? The Chiso Tamje Chibobot. The Chiso Tribody Long Chibobot Dashiriki. And so so uh, the Sankhya school uh, actually presents the whole of the thesis or uh, philosophical um, called philosophy within the uh, rubric of what are called the 25 different um, uh, objects. And so um, uh, the rest of the objects um, uh, come from uh, the, what is known as the Pradhan, the, the primal factor. And, uh, and then um, the, what, is, what comes from this primal factor is actually enjoyed by or utilized by what is known as a conscious being. Mm. Uh, then then uh, when uh, Master Asanga mentions the uh, unwavering uh, condition, what he's actually uh, countering is uh, the belief that uh, there is uh, some kind of a being um, like a creator, Ishwara or, or, or something which is permanent and uh, self-evolved without um, going through processes of um, enlightenment or anything. And then um, also it is uh, because of the will of that kind of Ishwara or God, things come. And such an idea is uh, countered by this uh, understanding of uh, things coming from that is uh, unwavering conditions. That's mm. it. Dikkebe dikke sa dikke didu didu tungen di didu chebo didu kasota didu pen doji kora gyue zanshi mitabu rechi kores didu di gyue zanshi raba didu di zanen drebu mitabu rechi mitabu rechi mitabu zanen di kezi gyu diye mitabu rechi kores jazanga dikkebe dikke sa di gyu kora kengi wang chung te and then, um, 
And then the second condition that um, Arya Asanga mentions is the impermanent condition. And so here, in relation to this, uh, the sutra, uh, when the, when where it says that because this arises, therefore that ar uh, also arises. Um, um, the, what this shows is that our pain and pleasure, of course, are the results of something that has given right to, rise to them. And therefore, these experiences that we have, the pain and pleasure, are something which is um, called um, impermanent, changing all the time. And so what, um, and therefore, um, what um, it's called in the sutra, when it says, because this arises, that arises, what is actually uh, shown or taught is that the results do not come from something which is a permanent cause, but be, uh, because the result also changes, and uh, therefore it must come through a changing, um, impermanent uh, cause as well. Oh, then then. Nubegins,呃,Dungi,Juin,Dungi,Juin,Kaine,Kora,Devu,Jesu,Muji,Devu,Kasore,Namjur,Kandijane,T,Kayagi,Nubayoskores,Tenay,Nubegins,Tenay
after having taught about the suffering, then the, the, the origin of suffering, the cessation, and then the path. Next, what he uh, mentions is um, how to go about with the uh, practice of overcoming and through which to overcome our suffering and uh, go gain uh, uh, experience of happiness. And therefore, uh, he uh, mentions that uh, the, suf uh, the suffering has to be understood and then uh, uh, the, the, the uh, origin of suffering must be eliminated or overcome, and then the cessation should be uh, actualized, and then the path uh, should be uh, cultivated. That did the view any long door chair, you know? Do we do your best of not? That do we have many in the long door genical scheme? Do that long door basic genical game? That do we yours? That is. In the Murigo on the Chow Hindu Zane, that Ada in it. Do make you Murigo, Chinj Logo Lodi, Chinj Malogo, Lodi, and Chinj Logo Lodi, say to this. Didn't he do Zane? Don't eh? Don't eh? Do the chip, don't eh? Do Lar to me, Shevishaya. Tation do, Kunjun, Lar Pamacha, Pang Simbejella, Lar Pamacha. Mobongo to Chess Bejella, Lar Montucha. Lam, uh, Lam Rani Lungon to Kusi Bejella, Lar in Montuci, Tan Mavachi, Kanda, Jake, uh, Pangbot Topa, Tarch me Negula, the Lar Pangachita, Lar by Montuci, your manis. So then Jebushi to one. Ted the Chevji, Diggy, yeah, uh, Denshi Namshati, Tanya want to change your eyes. That, uh, to make the ball of sovereignty, turn Tambe want to change your eyes, Tambri, to wish your eyes, your maris. Santa, to me, Tanya to me, Shiver Chaco Gurdi, in a Tatun Zen, in Yibet to me, your maris. Certainly, in the Shiver Charmes, and it turned them the barpa, yeah, Jazan Chikiori. And then um, here, once the Buddha uh, has taught that uh, um, how to go about with overcoming suffering and attaining happiness, um, of course, when, once you uh, apply the teachings within oneself, if there is no way that you can actually overcome suffering and attain the result, which is the true cessation and so forth, then of course there's no need for the Buddha to uh, teach about um, overcoming suffering and uh, its causes, uh, knowing suffering and overcoming its causes and attaining the cessation and so forth. But because there is a possibility for us to overcome ignorance, uh, because ignorance is ro um, the, the root of our suffering, and ignorance itself is uh, a, a misconception which sees or views things, um, gone, uh, something which is not real or something which is unreal there, and therefore um, uh, it can, because it can, it is a distorted state of mind, therefore there is an antidote to it, and therefore uh, once you apply the antidote within your, uh, yourself to overcome the ignorance, then um, that also uh, puts an end to the suffering. And therefore, um, once you have eliminated and uprooted the uh, or overcome suffering completely, then uh, what happens is there's, uh, there you reach a stage where you uh, do not um, have to overcome or apply yourself to overcome s uh, suffering anymore. And therefore, um, um, although um, in the, in the, uh, during the second set of the teaching, the Buddha says, know the there, that there is suffering and uh, um, that uh, the origin of suffering must be overcome and so forth. But then uh, during the third set of this uh, four noble uh, teaching on the Four Noble Truths, uh, the uh, Buddha has said um, that uh, I mean he refers it um, uh, with reference to the result. He says, um, uh, called, uh, the suffering must be known, but there is nothing to be known. So what, is, what, he's actually, um, what he meant by that is that although in the conventional sense, suffering, there is suffering, and there is origin of suffering, and, and oh, uh, therefore to overcome. Uh, that? Then she 
I'm sorry. Uh, and so I, I should say sorry. <laughs> <laughs> too long, too long, maybe. <laughs> I would like to say I, uh, I, I would apologize if I leave anything out. And uh, I seek uh, help from Kishla and others also. Um, so when it comes to uh, the third set of the you know, teaching on the Four Noble Truths, um, the Buddha has taught that uh, there is, I mean, the suffering should, uh, should be known, but there's nothing to be known. And then the, uh, the origin of suffering should be uh, eliminated or uh, overcome, but there's nothing to be overcome, and then cessation should be um, called, uh, actualized, but no, there's nothing to be actualized, and then the path should be actu uh, cultivated, but there's nothing to be cultivated, right? And so um, uh, here, what the Buddha is actually t uh, teaching is, of course, on the conventional level, we can understand that there is suffering and the origin of suffering, and then there is also true cessation, um, which is this elimination of all the uh, causes of suffering and suffering, and then the path leading to that goal. But then, um, what um, here, what is being um, said is that. In the ultimate sense, when you, um, for example, in the case of uh, the, the relationship between uh, cause and effect, um, of course, uh, when we talk about causality, uh, which is taught in the, uh, the, the second set of the teaching on the Four Noble Truths, um, and, called, uh, and the first one also, um, what, is called, uh, what, the, uh, what we had to understand is that uh, the cause gives rise to a cause gives rise to its effect, and then we we can understand that uh, uh, an effect comes from its cause, and so um, from that in the in within the context of the, uh, the law of causality, what we can understand is that everything that is um, uh, called a result, um, a result sh must come from its cause, and therefore it is dependent on the cause. And um, so how having understood that a result or comes from its cause, now um, called, um, uh, the, the fact that a result is, I mean, uh, God, uh, a, a, a cause now gives it rise I to think its effect. Something uh, now that reality, now further investigate, uh, analyze, then r not only result depend on cause, but cause also depend on result. Now they, they yes. And so um, the cause also is dependent on its result that, that it gives rise to. And so uh, when we talk about this relationship between a cause and an effect, what um, we should also understand is that there is a moment, that turns, uh, a period of trans uh, called transition from uh, the level of the cause, um, from the cause to the effect. And so um, uh, when a cause is about to cease, a result is about to um, call arise. And so um, uh, called, uh, within that, I mean, during that period of transition, um, called, um, what we can see is that the result is about to arise. But then, um, called, um, so when, when that happens, al although the result is not yet there, but because there is a cause which is about to cease and which is about to give rise to its effect, because of the future effect that is going to arise from the cause, we can say we talk about a result being produced. And so, um, whereas if you really uh, call, uh, do an anal analysis into what that result is or where the result is, I mean, uh, uh, it's as if when we say a result is about to, I mean, a result is um, given rise to, um, called, uh, when we say that a result is about to uh, arise, um, although the result is not yet there, uh, it see, it's like there is no basis for the designation of that um, called, um, um, called um, uh, label. But then um, called, um, the, we, um, called, uh, the, the called, we still give that characteristic of arisal of a result as well. And then, um, called, um, although therefore the result is not yet um, called, um, it, um, produced, uh, it's yet, um, it's, it's to be, uh, it's uh, going to arise in the future. Um, we can still say that uh, there is a time 
when the result is about to arise. And so um, in this, um, what we understand is that, that, that when, when, when a cause is about to give rise to its result and the result is about to arise, although we can talk about in the conventional terms the result arising, I mean, um, uh, that the result is about to arise and so forth, there is a result that is going to arise in the future and so forth. But then what uh, we need to understand is that the, 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 uh, called, there is no objectively existing result or cause as such. And so in this way, um, call, uh, this is uh, like doing an ultimate analysis into the cause and the result. And um, therefore, uh, call, uh, in, in relation to a cause, um, which is um, uh, defined as that which gives rise to a result or that which is which helps a result to arise um, call, um, we should understand that the re that cause is uh, call, given the label of being a cause in relation to the effect that it's going to bring about and so um, and and then once the result is produced um, call, um, oh, the, the cause is no more there, um, but then we can still talk about the cause having given rise to the result. And so in this way, we can see that not only the, uh, the uh, result is dependent on its cause, but the cause is also designated in relation to the uh, effect that it um, uh, the, uh, the effect it uh, gives rise to. And so um, uh, the, the, the cause and uh, the uh, results become mutually dependent um, in this way, and uh, therefore uh, call, uh, the the causal dependency of things that uh, that causes give rise to result is uh, call, uh, something. So within the dependency here, we we uh, understand that there is a causal dependence of things, and uh, which is to say the karmic causal, I mean the causal uh, causes and uh, conditions given rise to their effects, and uh, therefore uh, we uh, have the causal dependency of things, which is. Uh, asserted uh, commonly by all the uh, four philosophical schools within Buddhism. Whereas uh, now, with, with, uh, in, con in regards to how uh, causes uh, called ultimately re uh, called related or dependent on its effect, um, um, that there is not, uh, no effect which, or no cause which is not posited in, uh, called without being related to its cause, uh, it called, uh, what we understand... Uh, its result. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. Um, th th what we understand from there is that there is no cause which is independently or objectively, e uh, objectively existent. And therefore, that rejection of an objective existence of a cause, um, um, call, um, uh, but the fact that there is a cause because of its result is something uh, 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 is understood to uh, in terms of how a cause is dependently designated in relation to its cause. And so this uh, is uh, the, 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 uh, what is taught. I mean, uh, this is uh, what is taught here in the, within the context of the Four Noble Truths uh, by the Buddha is like laying the basis or the foundation for what comes later in the teaching on, uh, of the Parijaparamita Sutras. Uh, where the Buddha uh, teaches that there is nothing which inherently exists, objectively exists. And so, um, uh, having said that, then Master Kamala Shila also say, uh, mentions that through the understanding of the law of causality, what we ca uh, can actually uh, do is to create the causes for a higher rebirth. And uh, then through understanding of the dependency in terms of how things are designated um, uh, and labeled, um, we uh, can uh, lead ourselves uh, by cultivating the causes for uh, the uh, enlightenment or uh, uh, definite goodness. As mm. So usually, you see, the, 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 sorry. It is well known. Children or son come from father. Yes, no argument. <laughs> now go more precise. The till son uh, exists, the person not yet a father. 
as soon as son develop, then that person become father. So son already did because of the exist. So when father, when son was, when son, son is there, the person not yet father. When the person become father, son already developed. So from that viewpoint, son not come from father. Isn't it? Payu do pume, puyu do pame, and pupale chung slushimaro. Cosme? So, Pumacha Badu, Pachamaro. For example, nobody called me father because no son, <laughs> no children. So, the Yine in the Payu do, because Putini Pacharo. So, Pupale chungmaro. And so here, um, you know, when when someone is called a father, it means that the person is uh, has a, a child, and therefore, um, called without a child, the person is not called a father as such. But then um, here we are ta uh, what we should understand is that when the person who actually um, called uh, sows the seed for a, uh, the son, the son is not yet there. Whereas when the son is born, the, the father or the, the producer of that um, son... The born, born mother. No. The conception. Oh. Conceit. No. Oh. And, and so when the Other, when Otherwise the child you can say proceed. during the uh, child there, then we, or the father. <laughs> so the... the no. The was the middle so, sorry. Um, when when a child is conceived in the mother's womb, uh, and so uh, in uh, in the sutras, uh, there is mention of uh, you know in relation to conception of a child, um, uh, the, the uh, there is a period when the person is uh, when the child is not yet a human as such, but then uh, is in the process of becoming a human, and then there is a time when the child is a human, and uh, so that is mentioned, and so we are here talking about the conception period. And so when the seed for that um, child, the, the, con uh, the child to be conceived, is sowed, I mean, the, the, uh, call, um, the, child, the, the conception is not yet there. And uh, call, um, when the conception happens, the person who has actually sowed that seed or uh, called, um, given rise to that conception has ceased. And so uh, in this way, uh, within this un uh, context, we can say when the father is there, the child is, or the conception is not yet happened, but when the conception happens, the father or the producer is has ceased, is no more there. Mare? No. That no, I think something wrong. Payu di pume. Payu di pume. Payu di pume. No. I think till conception takes place, the person not yet a father. So as soon as concept take conception. place, conception take place, then that person become father. So now, strictly speaking, the conception not come from father. Clear now? Clear. Oh, like that. Hmm? Before conception take place, that Good. person not yet father. Only conception after only after conception take place. Uh, so then that person become father. So that means the the conception not take place due to father. No father there at that time. <laughs> now, similarly, Chevabo, Chawa, Chawa, Yu, the 
yidi chawal tene chibobo chibobo tene chawal a chawal tene yu dushan go ko chibobo da manjure chawal yomar ba dagan de chawal da manjure chibobo bindu ba da chawe chaji lesum sa de tene sha chima do tuge rang se bisha bindu And so um, this uh, reasoning also applies to the uh, action, the agent, or the, um, the agent, and then the object on which the action is act, uh, go, uh, taking place. Uh, and so uh, these three things, the action, the agent, and the um, object of action, and are also uh, to be, uh, should be understood and to be related to uh, one another. So without their being, an action, you cannot talk about an actor as such. And so uh, similarly, without there being an action, you cannot talk about an, an, an object on which the action is taking place. And so um, um, similarly, an, act, an agent is, cannot be posited without an action and uh, an object of action. So these, now, this is Kasuda, uh, that shows things are relative. No independent. Uh, without investigation, yes, we can say this is this, this is. If you further investigate, you can't find. Chazang na zo ume shung na lo tom tebu yundu mata na nyam ka tang na shizu cha. So in the Madhyamaka treatises, um, there is, uh, uh, it's mentioned that when we don't do any kind of anal analysis or investigation oh, into things. Chidusane Mata Majaragane Shayadi Tanya Guzutamas. Tashi Chena Tashi Cheni Chik Turtunji de Tartun Cheni Tako Ni de Chidusane Tanya Zamkin Mutsimber Ko Tartun Cheni Ni Chidusane Tantam Dema. だ、だんだんに、さあ、彼らの、なんだ、だんだんに、他感度や持ちぶちだ、にはと。そう、20と。20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、20、
do conventionally exist. Uh, whereas um, when you do ultimate analysis or into the nature of things, then nothing can be found. It. And so this is um, um, what is clearly mentioned also in uh, Bodhisattva Charya Avatara by Master Shandideva, <coughs> where he says that things are merely conventionally uh, uh, existent through renown. And whereas when you do this ultimate analysis into things, nothing can be found uh, at all. And so um, when we say this thing exists, that thing exists, and so forth, we are uh, called, um, referring to these things in conventional terms. Whereas now, um, without uh, being... Um, um, and so in um, also in the um, in Master Chandra Kirti's um, Madhyamaka Avatara, um, he says that all these conventionality of things can be accepted in worldly in terms of worldly convention, um, where we do not do any kind of uh, ultimate analysis into the nature of things. And and then, um, and then, uh, Master Shandi, uh, Chandra Kirti also says in the same text that, um, of course, a chariot is not posited through uh, what is known as the sevenfold reasoning or investigation into the uh, ch nature of the chariot. But then, um, by uh, uh, call, um, um, call, uh, resorting to the worldly conventions, we uh, posit uh, uh, a chariot. And so in this way, um, what we can understand is that there <laughs> are these <laughs> two things. Root text, Abhisamaya <laughs> Alangara. Uh, almost come, and then Madhimika Avatara. Uh, it's a compulsory, memorize. So I, I myself also, you see, uh, since childhood, you see, they memorize you see, these two texts. Uh, then, you see, without any sort of understanding, just, you see, we uh, learn by heart. Just <laughs> And so, um, in connection with these two <laughs> classic texts, <laughs><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑
uh, memorize these two texts. The first one is so difficult to to you know to commit to uh, one's memory that it actually it uh, gives them a lot of hardship, and therefore because of that they also uh, the monks uh, called, uh, have to work so hard that they uh, called, uh, even get um, what do you call uh, lies and you know um, kind of uh, those uh, bugs on their uh, body, hair, and so forth. And so um, it's, uh, the, the text uh, Abhisamaya Alamkara is um, known as um, the ornament for clear realization. And so um, this ornament has ornamented me so much that I got the ornaments of, um, there is this saying that I got the ornaments on my uh, body with the laos and the lies. <laughs> and, um, and then um, we're con on having memorized this, that the next text that the monks uh, re memorize is Madhyamaka Avatara, which is to is say... Is more longer, more no, thick, no. Uh, more pages, no. so more difficult. No. So the, it becomes more difficult to commit to memory because of its uh, length, and, uh, and therefore the, the monks have uh, such difficulty memorizing it to the point that they sometimes have to run away from the monasteries. <laughs> So, yes. uh, um, oh. and so um, we were talking about the conventional reality and ultimate reality. And so the um, the ultimate reality, of course, is uh, uh, the uh, called, uh, the true or the ultimate, the final reality of how things are, and um, which is also called emptiness or. And so um, when we say that there is this ultimate reality, and uh, sometimes I mean, what, is, what it is is that uh, it is a, uh, called an understanding where you are not uh, an, an, an ontological status of things, which is uh, free from the two extremes of nihilism and eternalism. And so um, when, uh, called, uh, called, uh, when, you, when you really get deep um, called insight into it, um, it's as if that uh, called things uh, called, uh, um, disappear from your mind. And so uh, sometimes um, people even say that it is not findable. I mean, nothing can be found when, we, when they talk about emptiness. And so that is not actually the case. But uh, what we have to understand is that this emptiness or the ultimate reality is something which can be found by our cognition, our insight. Um, al although in uh, Master Shanti Deva's text, uh, there is mention there in the ninth chapter, it all says that uh, the <laughs> ultimate. <laughs> <reality> <laughs> so, in, in the uh, 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 Master Shanti Deva says that the uh, ultimate reality is not the object or uh, objective domain of mind or law here, um, called. The, what we have to understand, according to some scholars, they do say that uh, called, um, it is not uh, the object of ordinary mind, um, but although um, uh, it is an object of mind, because with, uh, called the, the, uh, the cognition which actually gains insight into that ultimate reality is the mind, which actually uh, realizes emptiness. And then, um, in, in, uh, according to some other scholars, uh, they say that uh, the, this ultimate reality is, of course, um, an experience of a direct perception of an Arya being. When, uh, called, when an Arya being, I mean, uh, in other words, uh, I'm sorry, and when an Arya being realizes this emptiness, there is this direct experience of emptiness. And so uh, that kind of experience that happens to an Arya being at that level of the part of seeing and beyond, um, is, it becomes something which is beyond an ordinary person's, ordinary um, being's conception our thought, and also it is beyond our um, called speech or uh, expression. And so uh, because of that, uh, called, uh, the, uh, what is uh, what said in Shantideva's text is um, interpreted in that way, that it is not an object of an ordinary person's mind as such. So, 
Casa Tonio Tobe, Tare Kuru, Tare Kurus, and the Yamnon, Yakomu Kome, and the Sigin and Tokri, Sashtoa. Tando Lok Hungry to you, men, that shed one. And so, in fact, Master Shanti Deva himself has um, mentions in the same chapter, chapter nine, uh, chapter nine of the Bodhisattva Charya Avatara, uh, that even in, 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 having mentioned that. Uh, Called understanding uh, that there, there are understandings of the world and then the yogis, and so um, within the yogis, he's, he, he, he mentions that because of the progressively I mean, the higher realizations, the higher you know, uh, those who are on a higher level of I mean, perception of the uh, called the ultimate reality actually outshine those of the Lord. The, uh, uh, the, uh, in the lower levels, and so um, this, in in fact, uh, sh- uh, very clearly shows that the ultimate reality is an object of mind. Otherwise, we cannot talk about there being these progressive, uh, you know, stages where the higher ones can over uh, outshine the lower ones in terms of ultimate uh, understanding and uh, the, the profundity of the uh, the realizations in relation to that. So now. Uh, Philosophical sort of part, these sort of concept, actually direct sort of antidote, the kasoda, temple sympathy. No, so it uh, so this understanding of emptiness would directly counter the uh, grasping or clinging at some kind of a true objective existence and things. Kasgejuan, the kono seve kaduria yude temple shen, eni tsumi ginam do jota. In a conversating age. And so, as we uh, already uh, talked yesterday, when uh, when you become angry, when um, what happens is that first you hold on. You have a view of the object at which you uh, uh, you get angry, as if there is an objective, solid kind of a person to whom or things to whom you get angry at, and then because of that distorted view about the object, the person, or the thing, then you tend to uh, create some kind of a um, uh, misconception about it. And uh, it's like, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, called the in, in, in inappropriate mentation, as it's called. And because of that distorted view, then you actually become angry at the person. Mm. Now, the the main disciple of Nagarjuna, Arya Deva. Uh, the four hundred verses. He mentioned Lula Lua Chishindu Timukuna Nejutis Chene Migwombuna Omuna Ombus and Didi or Migla Sub Wang De So 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 Nadia is Luji Wombu De Migwombus of Umbukuna Chavi. Petition do and a Dasha ye you love a change chuck and zinda. T. Shadang Yamaris, Shadang, or Jibchi Chowaris. Chadanga, Shadang, Chadang, so so chicken zinda, chigedo, that this so so say yaris, or in a tin yigan lola, Dasha, change chucksa, Shadang, shen, tangsa, tin yigan lola ya, you damba. You tamba on Ziagil, uh, Lotti Nigal, Chichos, Nigal or Yaris. The Dinay Luzane, Lulu Luanchi, the Timu Gulanaju, this. The Nomo Tamjada, Timu Chapiaris, Timu Chichiaris. The Nay Indu, Tishi Nomo Tamjaja, Timu Jombe, Jamarjus, the Sundu. So, Master Arya Deva in his uh, four hundred verses. Um, says that just as the uh, bodily faculty uh, pervades or permeates all the rest of the faculties, um, and likewise um, the ignorance um, also permeates all the other negative emotions. 
And so what this meant here is that just uh, um, although the, the, um, the visual faculty and the eye faculty or sensory, these sensory faculties such as eye faculty, ear faculty, chan, uh, tongue and so forth um, call, uh, are s uh, separate from each other. When, um, but then what uh, pervades them all um, is the physical uh, faculty. And so, um, likewise, uh, the, uh, our attachment, desirous attachment, and anger, and so forth. Of course, um, when we have these experiences, they have their own way of looking at things. For example, when you are, uh, when you are attached to somebody, then there is this exaggerated way of looking at things, uh, at the beauty of the uh, person or things. Uh, whereas, uh, it's totally different when you are angry or when you hate somebody, there is a total aversion. So these two states of mind are different. When, where there is attachment, uh, the hatred cannot come um, right there. And uh, where there is simultaneously. hatred also, simultaneously. No, uh, simultaneously, and where there is hatred, you cannot have attachment together there. But then um, the, uh, what is common to both is that both look at some kind of objective independent existence in the things that you are attached to or that you hate. And so that ignorance is what pervades both. And so, um, and then Master uh, Aryadeva goes on to say that um, by overcoming, um, and, and by overcoming this ignorance, then you can overcome the uh, attachment and anger as well. Mm -hmm. 다른 시간에 유고 정신은 돌이야 똥과 씨와 깨와 매배 추 미시 빼는 로아 참피 모아서 대다 투승하여 텁주다 리고 자다기는 지울 자였어 그래서 똥과 씨와 깨와 매배 추세할 때 남달 고슴이 시작하리 자 남달 고슴으로 몽배 롯디기 애니 뚱이 싸워치고 하리 근데 인두 어다 애니 남달 고슴이 다 가수로 대권하니 치지 말라고 시작하리 Tabla, jam dan degi, ini tabjun nama mengucin. Tapi thoma kasar dah meragwa su. Perlu cakap mana? Tergi ramai, dah mebe, dah me ragwa jisu. Dan er kasar ramai tu be zai jutu ne, dah me jisu. Dan er kasar rasmi tu be, tu be tome, kasar dah me chamusu. Dua sen, tabjun tu meragwa su orang tu. Di minjilia medawa. Dungyo, di sumo tu. Gombolu dungi, mida dungi, tongba shi, chao sumo sem jong che. Chao sem, chao tu sem jong che wa, dungi rang shi mewa yin sa, da di sumo tu. Chisang ta di di, tab ju chui, naba tume gwa ni ti yung yu ari si. Da di ni, da mi wa dao tiang la pa yu di zane, ju ba jata ke ni ju ba ni zay si, gyu lu ju ba toji sing wa din si, ngo lu ju ba jik du jay ki din si, jibu lu ju ba yame gyan gwa ki din si lo so wa. No. Kunci ni kalau coba kare ini kasar kare kare tensi sa. Kunci ni kalau coba kasar musi jangwa. Umat yang nak yang itu, cik itu mesti cik itu mesti cik itu sih sih sih. Tadi cair. Jadi apa? Jika tu mangu sungguh lah. Tapi jika kita sama lu kung tu sedi, tapi tenji jadi sedi. Tenji tak apa sedi sih lah. Jangan kan betul betul dia, betul betul dia cik dia, cik cuma sih dia macam tu, tanda dia ni. Ngoh ni itu mana? Tini siap ber cakap es. Cepat kan dah kahwin, cepat cepat teh sah. Zul zul sah, ngoh ni itu macam mana? Cepat dia senyap dah siap dia es. Ngoh ni itu mana? Tini siap ber cakap es. Tanda tak ber cicah es. Tapi kalau anda jenis lembut, kalau begini ni apa yang dia cakap ni? Tanda siap ber cakap es. Korang demi rancangan apa korang diri, jun diri, jauh diri senjata tu. Tapi ko ngoni itu pun jujur sah, mana itu sah ni? Dengan siapa tu? Jadi apa tu mana apa ngangge? Tapi dengan siapa mana? Siapa? Karena mereka macam itu, siapa yang cakap itu sah ni? No, tapi dengan tak pasang mana mereka? Dengan tak pasang insan ngoni itu pun yang mari. Jadi tadi juga dia buat dengan itu sah. And then also in um, 
uh, another sutra called Rashtapala Sutra, um, it is said that um, because of ignorance, not knowing um, the empty nature and then the peaceful nature and uh, the, the nature of uh, un, the unborn nature, uh, um, called the uh, uh, no. oh. and so um, which actually refers to what was known as the three doors of liberation. Um, um, and so, because of ignorance of these th uh, three doors of liberation, uh, the uh, sentient beings are called wonder in samsara. And uh, therefore, um, moved by his, uh, uh, the compassionate uh, Buddha, um, and what he has done is that uh, he has shown or taught various means through which the, the sentient beings are led out of this suffering. And so, um, so because of these, uh, the ignorance or confusion about the three doors of liberation, um, the, uh, the, what, which, the, which serves as the root of our suffering, we suffer. And therefore, um, in, order to, in order to lead us out of this ignorance, out of this suffering, then the Buddha has actually shown us that uh, the means uh, the, which is the, to say that the, he has shown us the reality, the, the true nature of things, how things are. And therefore, um, um, with regard to this true nature of things, um, called, um, the uh, emptiness, and in, in terms of showing us the path leading out of this suffering, um, the, what the Buddha has actually done is uh, led us, um, the, his disciples, in a in kind of a... Um, as in, in, in an orderly kind of a manner, um, first by teaching um, the, with regard to selflessness, there is a teaching. Uh, there, there is teachings on uh, the, the uh, selflessness on a very gross level, which is to say uh, that the selflessness of a person or an atman, which is permanent, single, and autonomous. So such an uh, atman is rejected as the first step to uh, leading into that uh, uh, um, selflessness, the, the deeper selflessness. And then, the, uh, uh, then after that, then the Buddha has t also um, got, uh, taught about the selflessness in terms of how a person is devoid of um, a, a self-sufficiently, um, substantially existent kind of a, a being. And uh, which is the, the middle level kind of understanding of uh, the uh, selflessness. And so having taught this, then the finally he uh, taught the, the deepest uh, selflessness, which is the, uh, that th uh, the things have the, uh, having no independent or inherent uh, existence at all. Now, in order to lead into these understandings of selflessness, then uh, what the Buddha has actually taught is um, also uh, to, to uh, uh, train our mind to go into this deeper understanding of selflessness. He taught how things are impermanent, and because of the, uh, being impermanent, how we um, go, because things are impermanent, therefore there is suffering as well. And so, in this way, uh, called, uh, the, the, the mind is trained through the meditation and understanding of self um, impermanence and suffering. And then yeah, you are led into this understanding of the, uh, the, the, the different degrees of selflessness. And uh, Master, Shandi, Master um, uh, Nagarjun, in his uh, Bodhicitta Vivarana, uh, says that um, uh, the Buddha has actually led us in this way, first leading us into understanding of impermanence and suffering to train our minds to make it more mature for understanding selflessness. And then he teaches the uh, grosser level and then the middle, um, in, uh, intermediate level of understanding of selflessness. And then finally into the in lack of inherent existence. And therefore, Master Nagarjuna says that uh, the, the best means the, uh, or the highest means to uh, 
purify our mind is uh, the, the teaching, uh, understanding uh, the, the of emptiness or th that things do not have any inherent existence at all. And so uh, in order to gain uh, this kind of um, understanding and insight into the deepest um, 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 emptiness, then there are various reasonings that are used to prove that things do not have any inherent existence. And so there are certain reasonings which uh, such as um, reasoning of uh, the splinter, diamond splinter, uh, which actually um, analyzes the nature of causes. Uh, and then there is the reasoning called lack of one and many or absence of uh, one and many, uh, which uh, uh, investigates into the I identity or the nature of things. And then um, there, are call, uh, there is also this uh, analysis called the four uh, alternatives, uh, which uh, call searches into the nature of, uh, looks into the nature of uh, effects. And uh, all these different uh, reasonings are actually... Oh, so I'm sorry, um, there's a little correction here. So with regard to, in relation to investigating into the nature of fruits, um, uh, uh, we have the reasoning called uh, the lack of uh, arisal from things existent and non-existent. <laughs> and then, uh, so there is also and then uh, when uh, investigating into the nature or the reality of uh, the both the cause and effect, then this other reasoning called the reasoning of the fourfold uh, alternatives is used. And then all these different uh, 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 reasonings to, to uh, call demonstrate or to prove uh, emptiness in this way um, call, um, boil down to the understanding of how things are dependently originated. And so within this context, um, we actually should understand that things are merely designated. And so everything whatsoever is merely designated, and therefore they are dependent, dependent on other factors and dependent in terms of being designated. And so um, if things do not have, uh, uh, depend on any designation, if they do not uh, depend on anything else, then we cannot talk about this and that and so forth. And therefore, um, um, Buddha Palita, in his text, um, uh, Buddha Palita uh, treatise, um, uh, which is a commentary to... Uh, and so uh, Buddha Palita, which is a commentary to uh, Master Nagarjuna's uh, Madhyamaka, um, Mula Madhyamaka Karika, uh, which may be one of, one of the earliest commentaries to the, this text. Um, in, in there, Buddha Palita says that um, if things were to have any um, you know, uh, intrinsic existence in themselves, then we can just say, um, uh, we do not need to resort to any other uh, factors to talk about things. They could just be established on their own by themselves. But then, um, and, and so he says that um, th that's not the case, but uh, if things were to have any kind of intrinsic existence, he says, what, uh, what well, need is there. So if things were to have any intrinsic existence, inherent or independent existence, then what need is there for things to be de dependently designated? And so, uh, in, uh, in, in, so in this way, the, the, the reasoning to prove uh, emptiness, which is called the king of reasoning, is said to be the reasoning on, of dependent origination, that everything is dependently originated, is the reason to prove that uh, nothing exists independently. And so yesterday also we talked about quantum physics. In, uh, according to quantum physics, uh, we can say that there is nothing which objectively exists. Mm. 
theoretically the four school of thought. Yesterday also I mentioned the Vivashek, uh, Sodantik, uh, Pajir and the Dindugyare Kaza. Dujin Chodi Chame. That's Suze. Dujin Chodi Chame. Shiva Kiji Chame. だ。え、ちょっとこのまりや、だ。チャメンベ、シルチャジェイ、ピチャチ。え、シェバ、ギンギ、ギンチャチャ。そうじゃ、カンダカイね、こう、チャチェス、さ、シュース、チャチェス、
their special parts, the extension, special extension, and uh, they, they have their directional parts as well. And so um, even if you cannot talk about uh, directional parts, I mean, uh, in, a, in a grosser sense, still what we can say is that if, in a, when, when the um, atoms, the particles get into the very subtle level, there is still a movement in, in the, at the level of energies or um, uh, things like that. There is still, we can talk about movement. And therefore, when, uh, where there is a movement, you can talk about a rear and an anterior part to that uh, thing. And therefore, they, they, it, it, this shows that uh, the, the, they still have different uh, uh, directional parts as well. But then, when you actually to try to look for the identity of that of the, the, the particles. I mean, uh, ultimately, of course, you will not be able to um, pinpoint anything as being this or that. And so, um, uh, therefore, in the case of Chittamatras, although they do assert that consciousness uh, uh, has an, an independent or uh, called a existence, um, but then, um, when, it, when it comes to matter and particles, they say that, of course, when, when, uh, when we see things, we can break them up into smaller parts, and then that those smaller parts also can be divided into subparts and so forth. And then, um, through this kind of analysis, what we get uh, come down to is, according to the Chittamatras, they say that nothing can be actually found within the matter. And therefore, because nothing can be confound within the matter, down to the uh, smallest atoms and so forth, and when you look for an atom, you still break it up into subparts and so forth. And therefore, because you cannot find anything, and, call, and, and ultimately they say there's no external existence at all. Although the consciousness still is asserted to have any uh, some kind of uh, call independent existence, the matter is said to be uh, non-existent, external, and therefore they say there is no external existence. But then, from the point of view of Madhyamakas, uh, just as the consciousness uh, uh, call, uh, does not have any kind of uh, independent existence because it is also formed of various moments. So consciousness uh, arises moment by moment, and therefore, um, called just as a consciousness does not have any independent objective existence, um, which means that if you try to look for consciousness or mind within it, I mean, you will not be able to come to a point where you can say, this is that thing, this is the consciousness as such, and therefore um, when you uh, call, uh, try to find what you designate as consciousness, I mean, you cannot find an objectively existent I mean, uh, entity to, uh, called consciousness as such. And so likewise, they say, uh, anything that is matter outside of us, I mean, they also are posited through, um, the, the, uh, although they cannot be found uh, to have any objective existence, yet they can, just as the consciousness can be uh, posited, I mean, uh, conventionally designated, they likewise they um, the, the external things also can uh, exist by way of our designation. And therefore, uh, uh, they say that uh, there is no need, uh, like the Chittamatras do, there is no, uh, call, uh, they say that, the Madhyamaka say that there is no need to say that there is no uh, external objects, that extern the, no need to say that the external objects do not exist. But then, uh, while saying that external objects do exist, they, they do not have any objective independent existence as such. And therefore, what gives them the identity of being existence is by merely by way of uh, our designation, using labels and conceptions. And so therefore, in conventional terms, things do exist in, uh, called as designated, whereas um, um, called an, an also consciousness do uh, exist uh, call by way of labeling, and therefore there is no need to say that uh, the external things do not exist as such. Huh? I think every phenomena which is momentarily changing is exist in time. Now time, examine time, 
past, present, future. Uh, the past and future depend on present. Now present, if we investigate present eon, present century, uh, present uh, uh, decade, a decade no. or year, month, or go like that, week, day, uh, then hour, minute, second, just one sec second past, one second future, no present. We cannot find present. Time always moving, so no present. Without present, we can't divide, define, 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 define past and future. Complicated, isn't it? So, so the conclusion is ju just mere designation without investigate. If we investigate, we can't find anything. We can't find anything pinpoint. No. This is this. No. Chazanka, Mingzam, the Shijing Shumnalo, Mingzam, Tazam, Sasung Shati. And so, in the, um, therefore, in the uh, perfection of wisdom sutras, uh, it, it said that everything is merely a name and merely designated. So now it is quite clear when we met our enemy or remember enemy, then the, oh, there's something absolute negative enemy, and then get anger and face also become red. And breathing also something. <laughs> so at that time, you see, you get the impression something independent, absolute negative. Clear. So then analyze what is the real enemy? His body, his mind, his speech? No. Then where he? <laughs> the person, you see, who feel anger also is now examined. My body, beside my body, my mind, my speech, where I? So that's the way the analytical meditation about that reality is the opposing uh, the concept of something independent sort of existence. That is the basis of all these destructive emotion. That's the way. So now the our sort of self-centered attitude. Uh, that even arahat also, you see, have some sort of what say, some level of uh, self sort of self cherishing way. Even Buddhisattva, Rangdu Chengju. So even in the case of Chengju the Chengju Tengju is neither. And so even in the case of Bodhisattvas, uh, they do have. Um, is wish for themselves to uh, to become enlightened. They do. They do have self-interest, and then um, so, so selflessness does not mean you simply forget your own right. No. Uh, the in order, uh, often you say, I telling people. I also feel the Buddhisattva is really uh, realistic, selfish. Hmm? The best way to fulfill your own sort of interest is taking care about other. Altruistic attitude. Fulfill. Best way for your own interest. So that selfish is wise selfish. Our selfish, very foolish selfish. Just forget others, right? And even exploit other, harming other. Okay. So that kind of selfish very much link with this grasping. No. No. 
And so um, this uh, kind of s extreme self-centered attitude uh, goes together always with, um, uh, which in fact uh, causes us all kinds of misfortune, go always go together with the clinging to some kind of independent or true existence and things. That the top of China is altruism. China is altruism. And so um, when it comes to practicing, uh, applying the, uh, the, pra the teaching within oneself in terms of practice, um, we uh, can cultivate the method aspect of the practice through the cultivation of altruistic attitude. And then um, in, in terms of the wisdom aspect of practice, um, we can um, call, uh, cultivate that wisdom which goes um, directly counter to this um, ignorant, uh, call, uh, ignorance about the reality of things and which in turn uh, is, um, call, um, uh, uh, imbues this uh, uh, cherishing, ex extreme self-centered attitude. Mm. Yeah. So now this text now. So is it this text? Something like the 37 practices uh, of Bodhisattva. Comprise. So the do, do, do yes. And so uh, this text actually uh, teaches us in a very uh, summarized kind of way the practice of these two methods and the altruism. Yes. And so mainly it emphasizes uh, the practice of altruism. In the altruism, the altruism, Sao Chizangi
And so, um, but when it comes to helping and serving others on um, um, purpose, um, call, uh, the altruism is also uh, complemented or uh, by uh, wisdom. So altruism is practiced on the basis of understanding the reality of things, and therefore uh, this text uh, emphasizes, uh, although emphasizes altruism, but it is done so within the understanding of the uh, reality of things through wisdom, and so. Um, here the the uh, first verse, which is a verse of homage to Avalokiteshvara, uh, uh, it says, "I pay constant homage through the uh, three doors to my to my supreme teacher and protector Chandrasik, who will, who while seeing all phenomena lacking, coming and going, makes single-minded um, efforts for the good of living beings." And so, what is uh, shown here is. Uh, and uh, uh, call, um, this is homage to the master, one's master and gender sick, and they are praised uh, when called, uh, through two qualifications, on the basis of two qualifications, um, which are the, uh, the skillful means or methods uh, aspect of the pr uh, experience or practice, which is, to, uh, which, which is mentioned or referred by uh, the, uh, the saying, uh, the by this last line where it says make single-minded effort for the good of living beings and then um, the um, the line where it says um, the, who while seeing all phenomena lack coming and going that shows the wisdom side of the practice and so the wisdom here is to be understood in terms of although um, called, uh, that in terms of understanding that there's nothing that can be found when you try to analyze or investigate into things or uh, analyze things. You cannot pinpoint anything as being this or that. And so, um, uh, although there is the compassion of m m our, the masters and the, the mas our masters and chandra Sikh, of course, the, which goes to the sentient beings, directed to the sentient beings, uh, we should still understand that there is no, um, in the ultimate, uh, call, uh, an al an in ultimate analysis, there is no uh, called compassionate one, nor some uh, beings to be compassionate at, and there is no action of being compassionate and so forth. And so, in this way, um, call on, uh, we can actually do this kind of analysis into the final nature of things uh, by understanding. Uh, that ultimately there is no coming and going, there is no oneness and uh, multiplicity and so forth. As um, Master Nagarjuna in his uh, uh, salutation verses of Mula Madhyamaka Karika says um, that uh, I prostrate to the, Bud the perfect Buddha, the rest of the teachers who taught that whatever is dependent there is in is unceasing, unborn, not annihilated, impermanent, not coming, not going, not uh, without distinction, without identity, and free for conceptual constructions and uh, being peaceful. And so um, what this shows is that in the ultimate sense there is nothing which we can find, which means that when you actually look um, or search for the ultimate reality, the how things actually exist, um, nothing can be found it to that we can point at as being this and that. And therefore, um, and although things do not have any kind of existence in that way, still we can talk about coming and going, sentient beings and uh, you know, compassionate ones and so forth, and only on the basis of how um, called understanding how things are dependently designated. And therefore, once you understand that things are dependently originated, dependent, I mean designated, merely designated, then um, what you can see is how, when you see the suffering sentient beings, you can see that although um, Called the, 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 they, they do not want suffering, they still suffer because of this ignorance. And so um, they call all this ignorance, you, what you find when you see the reality of things, the final reality of things is that you see that this ignorance is without any sound basis. You know, 
and uh, it call, um, and it only it's only the case that we have not been able to not yet been able to cultivate the uh, the counter force the, um, the which actually can uh, through which we can overcome this ignorance it's only the the, the mat uh, matter uh, the matter that we have not yet cultivated or uh, this understanding or the, the the antidote has not yet arisen in us uh, grown in us but then the ignorance itself has no sound basis and so when you see that then uh, you will be able to feel compassionate towards other sentient beings how they cause themselves uh, suffering and you feel dear them dear to you how um, um, call, uh, uh, this suffering becomes unbearable to you the suffering of sentient beings and therefore you want you, you through this understanding of how things uh, how ignorance is baseless when you understand reality then you will also have this um, uh, determination and the courage to uh, to to liberate uh, the sentient beings and so there is this uh, compassion this great compassion which actually uh, not just wishes but actually you want to uh, go save sentient beings out of suffering and uh, and therefore uh, master uh, nagarjuna in his uh, praise to the Buddha in, in uh, call, uh, paying his gratitude um, for teaching dependent origination at the end of Mula Madhyamaka Karika says um, uh, moved by your compassion um, you um, taught Uh, in, in order to, in order to, you ho you taught the sacred dharma in order for us to rid, in order uh, for us to rid of our um, uh, uh, distorted views. Oh yeah. Hmm? So this uh, sentence, the last sentence, or the mula, uh, Madhimika mula karika. Uh, I always. As soon as I wake up, I recite that word and some kind of salutation to Buddha. Mainly, his teaching about emptiness and altruism. It's very helpful, very helpful. So now, for example, the uh, person oh, who got sort of serious illness, but uh, can cure curable no. Ill illness. So our sort of, the sort of attitude is different. The person who have one disease, there's no possibility to cure. Then we feel oh, very pity like that. Then curable, uh, curable, where? No. Curable disease, then it's more enthusiasm to help bring some medicine or uh, uh, brought to, I uh, bring to hospital and give some medicine because it can cure. There is a possibility to overcome that illness. Then, so I said, a more realistic sort of enthusiasm to help. Clear. So once you realize the, the ultimate sources of suffering is can remove, then you see the sense of concern of their well-being becomes something stronger. Clear. So the wisdom and compassion very much related. Compassion, uh, so the Dungeda Janduk Ninji Dungele Tumduk Ninji. That Dungele, that Tess and that Dungele Tanas and the Semchik. Yeah, Dungele Sakarakara Tala tells Dungele Tower Chala never Janduk Ninji. That it Tumduk Ninji. And so, um, within compassion, there is a compassion with. Uh, which actually is just a wish that you wish that somebody may be uh, out of suffering. But then there is a second level of compassion, which is not just the, uh, uh, staying at this wish level, but then you actually want to work for the beings. So the second uh, type of uh, compassion very much combined with wisdom. The first part, just for the wish, no, wish no, like that. So now, mm. the second verse is Pendijuna, so I said, you know, Tamju Drublish, when they turn it, they lolly, share a lolly, they're selling a lolly, share a chance. 
church wala rale tan shay and so the uh is on just read the second verse which says perfect with us source of all being well-being and happiness arise from accomplishing the excellent teachings and this depends on knowing the practices so i will explain the practices of bodhisattvas so this is like a um the pledge to compose the text ah uh lo rinbe ya nge la kwa cha ya la uh jing Lam Yozo, Quacha, Quadi, Shushkash Murisha, San Nam Jung, Shushizane, Yala Sanjik Shu, Motuchat, Shing Shang of the Perlia, Dijare, Nitawa City, Perlia, Kompaji, Kampuchi, Zaria, Mishi Chaga Yomre, and Dini Muti, Kampushu Melche, and Kampushi, and not Kampuja, Kamukawa Tavares. Isn't Lame Loman Gogor, Lame Lama Gogor, said that don't take the word. Critical comment now. Yes. <laughs> so it's um, very important when you go about with the practice of the Dharma to develop uh, an understanding whereby you have a holistic understanding the, the, of the entire uh, the path, the system of how you go about and uh, the whole system. Now that's very very important. Oh. And so it's very important to do that. And so because of that, I always uh, give when I give Dharma teachings or discourses, I always give this broad uh, overview of how, um, the, like an in introductory form, uh, to ha how to have this holistic or uh, understanding of the whole system of the path. And so otherwise, what will happen is uh, the teachings. When the lamas give teachings, it would be it would sound like uh, you know frightening people, and um, because uh, there is a story here um, it, uh, in calm area of Tibet there was a monastery and uh, the, uh, some people came to visit the abbot of the monastery and then um, uh, the, the, uh, one of the attendants of the uh, abbot was there and uh, the people asked where the uh, abbot went and the, the attendants uh, response was that the abbot had actually gone to the town or the village to frighten the elderly people <laughs> so what this refers to is that you know if we are not careful the lamas when they give teachings to people um they might say that oh, you you have to be very careful in terms of practicing the dharma because if you if you do you, you should things, practice you should follow guru yoga uh you should respect me uh, you should consider faith to me and then the uh, little the uh, low, lower tone bring more money. <laughs> <laughs> you will get immense sort of kasoda process. No, immense merit. Immense merit. No. Mm. Recently I heard you see uh, the one Tibetan monk. I know that person. Good scholar, genuine, authentic sort of practitioner. So usually, you see, he gives teaching. There's explanation, and try. It's almost like educate people. Mm. Uh, one another Chinese uh, Buddhist, you see, attend that, and then that Chinese was expressed, "Oh, your Lama, uh, give us a lot of work, study, and the meditation like that. My Lama, not that way. My Lama, telling us." The Chinese, you see, my lama is telling us, uh, bring money, then you because of send to uh, Sukhavati, no, heaven. Uh, uh, heaven. I will, I will send you. <laughs> you don't need any work, just bring money. Really, 
really it's very silly, very dangerous. It's a, such sort of activities really degenerate Buddha Dharma. Uh, Buddha Dharma is a full of enthusiasm, seeing the goal, final destination, Buddhahood, and also know how to achieve that. With fuller knowledge, then you get full sort of enthusiasm, courage, uh, willpower, then practice. That's the way, not out of fear or hell. <laughs> and Buddha, the four noble, first four noble truth, Dunge Shebra Cha Seyadi, Dunge Ji Dunge Sarang, Nyo Sarang Dunge Ki Sri Remendoa, Nam Ji Sarang Nam Sung Seyadi, Duji Dunge Lagone, Kasa Dunge Ni Ni, Kasa, Duji Dunge Lagone, Daka Rai Ni, Dunge Shebra Cha Seyadi, Duji Dunge Le Sung Yare, so um, when in the uh, teaching on the Four Noble Truths, when the Buddha said, uh, uh, know that there is suffering, He's, uh, he was not uh, referring mainly to uh, suffering like hell realm and pain, pains in hell realm and so forth. But then what he's actually uh, pointing to is the third level of suffering. Within suffering, we, there are three types of suffering, which are known as the, the suffering of suffering, the painful ex uh, experiences that we know as uh, undesired, and then the suffering of change, and then the third level is called the conditioned existential pervasive suffering. So that when the Buddha says no suffering, this is what he is pointing to. Um, uh, called, uh, th by understanding this conditioned existence as being suffering, then we would be able to really generate a true uh, wish or determination to be out of suffering and uh, not so much uh, go, uh, uh, thinking about by thinking about uh, the suffering of suffering although uh, by thinking or reflecting on painful experiences such as the exist uh, call, um, the, the, the suffering in the uh, lower realms of existence, unfortunate realms, we may be able to practice or uh, restrain from the, the ten non-virtuous actions. We may be able to uh, practice that morality of keeping the ten virtuous actions. Um, call, uh, it doesn't necessarily lead directly to the liberation. And so mainly the teaching on suffering, is, the purpose of the teaching of suffering is to lead us to nirvana, Mm. Yeah. So, the aim Buddha Dharma is Nirvana Moksha. In order to uh, achieve Moksha, Nirvana, as I mentioned earlier, see, we need the, that wisdom which understands Shunyata. So that only human being see, can analyze that. Other moments cannot. So therefore, in order to uh, carry practice or effort to reach moksha, the human body, human brain is highly necessary. Therefore, uh, as a practitioner, first step, we should accumulate right now the guarantee or sources to, to get uh, human uh, life. Rebirth. Now. Uh, rebirth. Uh, rebirth. Human rebirth. So, so now here, Arya Deva, 400 verses, you see, he mentioned, Sunam member Tambur Dogs. Pardo Dan and Dogger Che. Tamar Tashi Kundova, Tishitan Kerry. And so in the four hundred cars, no? Yeah, the Mundu Tools. Then I get it. So, uh, in the 400 verses, Master Arya Deva says that first, um, call avoid or overcome the um, 
unmeritorious um, actions or practices, and then in the middle um, overcome this grasping at self, and then uh, finally overcome all distorted views. And so one who is able to understand um, uh, this is a wise person. And so what he's actually uh, teaching us is on um, how to go about with the practice which leads, um, uh, with the practices leading uh, to higher rebirth, and then in the middle, having uh, gained that, then uh, how to uh, reach or, or attain um, nirvana, and then finally how to attain the omniscient state of Buddhahood. Mm-hmm. So, in relation to the first line of these uh, 400 verses, which uh, is, is, uh, teaches us how to uh, avoid uh, uh, unmeritorious uh, actions, um, we go through the text. Oh. Uh, Tosun and so uh, verses number one, two, and three um, uh, shows that how we should uh, engage ourselves in the practice of developing uh, or hearing or listening to the teachings and uh, developing the understanding based on that and then also understanding based on uh, reflection or contemplation and then also um, the meditation. And so um, uh, when you do these uh, practices and uh, listening to teaching, reflecting on the meaning and then meditating, um, it is important for us to not to be distracted by um, you know, love-hate kind of attitudes related to one's uh, near and dear ones and also uh, those adversaries. And so one should not be led astray by them. And so this is what is taught. And so uh, in these three verses, um, together what it shows is um, how to uh, go, uh, go about with the practice of listening to the teaching, reflecting and re- meditating, um, called by uh, reflecting, uh, by knowing this uh, preciousness of hu- uh, human life and uh, to uh, go see that it is a meaningful one. Then, uh, uh, and then next comes uh, meditation on uh, impermanence, um, which is to, uh, uh, to uh, counter. Uh, uh, no. Impermanence, two, two levels. One permanent, one impermanence is Gunji Midawa. That was Shua Midawa. So, one level of understanding impermanence is, um, you know, uh, the severing of a continuity of something. And so, um, for example, when you meditate on the impermanence and death, mm-hmm. that is the kind of uh, meditation on the grosser uh, level of impermanence. The more subtle level, impermanence is momentarily changing. See, the what is the causes of momentarily changing is its own causes. So therefore, you see, the all phenomena which is momentarily changing is actually So they are um, subject to causes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
And so uh, the, the, the kind of psychophysical compa combination or aggregate uh, that we have is uh, understood to be under the uh, is subject to ignorance. And so because of such an ignorance, um, then, and therefore, uh, because of the ignorance being its uh, primary cause, therefore, uh, this kind of psychophysical aggregate that we have is said to be in the nature of suffering. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you see, that, uh, you see, the telling us that that sort of thinking, uh, sort of Kasuta, give us the impression we, at the moment, we are slave of ignorance. So more desire uh, to overcome that, that is the genuine desire to achieve moksha, liberation. From where you liberate, eliminate ignorance. So wisdom becomes very, very important. Now the union drop because a union drop it, that is also the baby trip, not the shit, legion drop, and I'm sure the send it like yes, I'll leave. And then Kanda Dona to some very just one of a Chan, Chan Lynch, but you should be strong about it. Consider and never say you and the young one that I pay you a senior double rank, live with the chips, but just a lolly in sin. They said that in a chimmer day, tap them by set. Ryan Coyers jumped to the jump to the land in you. Ryan Coyers on a chip when you didn't like a sushi company. Tis a car like Jim and Miluvi, Gunjo jumped to just a lolly. Shinzo Sugar and Sun to Nano, Tibet Legend to your son. Tisha Sola for your digger, now I miss Jessa Lani, or the diggy, Georgie, give some sin, or Tesan or Sunshav and Nagata, give two million in the Sumata. That pair of laws is all over the native description to us. Yes. And so, um, it's only just read from uh, verse number four through to the end of verse number seven. And so, uh, what these uh, show is. Uh, Um, how how we should uh, avoid uh, preoccupation with uh, the the pleasures of the next life, and uh, then uh, these lines uh, also show the practices pertaining to beings with a uh, um, small scope, and which is in accordance with the the uh, tradition of Lamrim, the the, the, um, the graduated or the steps stages of the path to enlightenment. Uh, called uh, which comes from Master uh, Adisha. That is what the system tells us. 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 That is Sibo Koe, that danger condition, eh? Any? Ye demeva. Louis and Shane were torn in the Tabatin law. Don't do you to me something that Tabatin law did it. And so part of the done and double chase said she gave it sick. And so verse number um, 8 and 9 read, and so verse 9 shows the very subtle uh, understanding or level of impermanence, which is to say that things changing momentarily. And, uh, and then in, in connection with Master uh, Aryadeva's verse, which says in the middle, uh, get rid of uh, you know, uh, clinging to self, um, uh, this uh, verse also shows that um, uh, uh, the meaning or the, uh, the same subject matter. And so the mainly what we should understand here is that uh, to, uh, call, uh, to, to cultivate this wish or the aspiration to liberation by understanding the existential conditioned uh, nature of suffering. Mm. Huh? Tarbo Tobala, Jerry in the Casore, a dummy need to a Casag dummy, cheat dummy. Did do or Chebopo, did do nyopo da, a dog think a dummy da, a long jeje punso, get think a dummies and dummy niche, Casa dem cheat dummy niche. The Chendu nig, Casa dames and Matu cheat them soon, Usim nig cheat them soon. Dana Nansigi, 
pusing betul dia nala, tu tu baru nala, ni, nyamu pon nala, kasar tak mungkin kau macam cokris, cina pun kau maris, semua cik, dah, umur ber, ni tanya tu orang zaman misi ber, lulu tu tu mungkin betul, siapa tahu tu, so yang tu zaman ni, ada ni, cuci tangan zaman kasar tangan zaman si cuci hari, jadi yang tu zaman ni, dah macam tak boleh, kasar dah macam rapat tak boleh, lugu maris, kasar dah macam tak boleh. So that is the part of the double chase. So that is the part of the double chase. Because the double chase is the same as the double chase. The double chase is the same as the double chase. The same as the double chase is the same as the double chase. The same as the double chase is the same as the double chase. The same as the double chase is the same as the double chase. The same as the Nyomong ini boleh cipar bahu, siri ini boleh jugi amal. Jadi nizi kita tanya kau bahu, bahu tanya dobo sesuatu jangan yang lebih susu itu. Tapi tak sih kau dobo, tak yang tiga minit, ada jadu sih, di sana. Tadi jadi itu sana, jumpa dua orang sih, nangsi kita tadi, kebe orang buat sih, siapa mana mana juga tadi siap kau tadi siapa kau cuma ni. Ini jadu sih, tu sama tanya mana, ini. Jadi, bayangkan ni, rasanya tu kau tinggi macam ni aja tu kan? Nampak cewek kau, nampak teruk kau tinggi macam ni aja. And so, in order to attain nirvana, jadi ambil ni leng dengi, ini umur ni buat sampai ni ala, cuma dia kau tu susun tu kan? Cina tu cuma, rangdi tu cuma dia susun tu kan? And so, in order to attain nirvana, um, we should meditate on uh, the selflessness nature of things, that things do not have any uh, um, independent selfhood or um, um, existence. And so within this, of course, um, the, there is this selflessness of um, other I mean, the phenomena and uh, persons and phenomena. Persons here refer to, for example, if you um, call an actor, an agent, a doer of things. And so there is no independently existing self. And then there is no, also no independently existing um, call, uh, psychophysical aggregates which we experience as well. And so this is to say that the, the, the selflessness of uh, um, uh, phenomena other than uh, persons. And then, um, if in order to, I mean, with, uh, with regards to the teaching on selflessness, of course, there are uh, of persons and phenomena. We have the uh, different philosophical schools within Buddhism, uh, such as those uh, Vaibhashikas and Sotantikas. Uh, these two um, schools of philosophy um, do assert selflessness of persons, whereas they do not ex ex assert selflessness of uh, uh, phenomena, and then uh, whereas uh, uh, the next two, uh, the other two uh, philosophical schools, Chittamatra and uh, Madhyamaka, they uh, do assert selflessness of persons as well as selflessness of phenomena. And of course, there is a difference in degree of subtlety within the understanding of selflessness of uh, persons and phenomena. And therefore, Chittamatras and uh, uh, other some uh, some of these schools and sub schools uh, within Chittamatra and uh, the sub uh, Madhyamaka, they say that in order to overcome our negative emotions, the destructive emotions, the kalashas, um, it's not necessary to for the practitioners to cultivate this insight or penetrative insight into the selflessness of phenomena, but it is enough or sufficient to um, cultivate this uh, penetrative insight into selflessness of persons. Um, whereas the followers of Master Nagarjuna, 
especially those who um, the, the, God, the followers of Master Nagarjuna who uh, d- do not accept any intrinsic existence. Um, according to them, they, they say that in order to overcome even these negative emotions that are within ourselves, the disturbing conceptions, um, we must have penetrative understanding or insight into the very subtle level of uh, the uh, selflessness of persons, not just remaining at, uh, called at the very gross understanding of selflessness, but the subtlest selflessness of persons as well. And so there must be this realization, the subtle realization of subtle uh, selflessness of persons as well. And uh, here, um, Call, um, when uh, in in context or in connection with Master Arya Deva's uh, line, which says in the uh, middle, uh, call uh, get rid of this clinging to self. Um, we could understand it to mean that we need to uh, understand selflessness, this subtle selflessness, not only to overcome uh, negative emotions, but also to overcome these stains, that the, the residual stains that are left by these uh, called, uh, negative emotions, which are called um, the co- uh, cognitive obscurations or obscuration to knowledge. So even for that, to overcome that, we need to meditate on the selflessness of persons as well. And so um, what these uh, call, um, show is that it's very necessary for us to, I mean, important for us to gain a deeper understanding of the de- philosophical um, call, um, deliberations of these different schools, and read the different texts written by the different masters of different philosophical schools, and compare and contrast in order to gain a deep uh, call, understand that there are deeper philosophical uh, implications. And so, um, accordingly, uh, the master Bhav Viveka has written. Uh, Madhyamaka Hridaya text, and uh, which um, uh, call, uh, deals with all the different uh, classical Indian philosophical schools, non-Buddhist schools as well as Buddhist uh, philosophical uh, systems. And so, following this text, many Tibetan masters of all the different traditions have written uh, uh, texts which are called um, Trupta, the uh, called, um, system of philosophy. Um, uh, and so uh, it is very important for us to study these texts in order to gain deeper understanding. Mm. Yeah. That is never that in that. But Tamar Tashi Gundova said that day, any Sanji you go on to a shadow, she do point out that teaching a lamp shade. That tell her any. え、東日東は地区にないや。東日東は市力に任務を終わらえ、長州府選議、ギャップ天国やれ。さ、長州府選議ギャップ天で だ、だめ、どうだ、ジグベル、こう、メラメラメラメラ、ドゥジェ、え、シェジェメラメラメラ、ドゥジェ、え、シェジェメラメラメラ、ドゥジェ、え、シェジェメラメラメラ、ド
Tasha Tao Chanoya, negative, full of machine to Tabozo, Jessella Ning. Round the Nyambang. Maybe Joey, Naja Wangi, Nizo Chenaya, Lamachin to Kuita, and you chew the Jessella Ning. So I punch it down to me, subsidy at twenty thousand lar, drug it to dollar, and she moved by Jessella. Never touch a drama, she went to Nam to Puyan on the top of Jan, Sibe, and you will miss in the camera by Jessella Ning. Rangi Shadanta, or Motuna, Chiruta, doing a patient Pelanjo, Tishi Chamberlain, Mubu, Rangudo, Yasalani, Debayan, the Lenzer, Chudanda, Chisholm Church, Silver Pelanjo, Kanda Shansa, Momono, Talabon, Yasalani. That Dibodo, a Kuzu Sanjusem, Gessi Pondu, Chukuzism, Kamia, Gessi Pondu, the Jolly Song. And so, um, verses 10 to uh, 21, 21 um, are read. And so, in connection with verse number 11, um, what this shows is uh, that of the, uh, the cultivation of bodhicitta, this altruistic intention um, of bodhicitta, um, which is done through exchange, equaling and exchanging self and others. And so with regard to that practice, um, we can find uh, an explanation of that in Master Nagarjuna's um, Ratnavali and also his uh, Bodhicitta Vivarana. Um, but then uh, in order to uh, call, understand and in order to learn uh, the, the, this practice in great detail, uh, you uh, should uh, read uh, Master Shandi Deva's Bodhisattva Charya Avatara, um, which uh, deals with this practice of exchanging, equaling and exchanging self and others in a great detail. And uh, then uh, from here to 21, um, what is shown is uh, in, in terms of now in, uh, when you cultivate this conventional bodhicitta, this aspiring and um, or conventional bodhicitta, the, the altruistic intention, um, uh, these verses uh, show how, how to avoid, what are the obstacles to them and, and then how to avoid those obstacles, overcome the obstacles as well as how to boost your uh, cultivation of bodhicitta further. That day, that Tanunchanjusumkomiati, Umobola Nancy Nichen, Chicksanda Nazo Jibe, Umobin, Dobana Chicheni, Shizuya, Sek, Shabana Chicha, Tene, Tasso. Taya Sanjay, the daughter of Shabana Chicha, Tene, Tasso, Jurisha. Did Yamsha not go to the shell? Did you you don't use the travel, and you are the two Jason so these verses, um, I mean, verse number 22 uh, downwards shows the practice or cultivation of uh, bodhicitta, which is called the uh, ultimate bodhicitta. And um, so verse number 22, in fact, uh, says, uh, shows this ultimate bodhicitta, which is also called uh, the, the uh, cultivation of sustaining meditation on um, the, the sky-like or the space-like uh, absorption. And uh, the, uh, this verse, particular verse, can be in, uh, explained um, from the point of view of uh, the Yogacara Madhyamaka system. 
uh, founded by Master Shandidev, uh, Shandarakshita, and then uh, his followers. So we can explain it according to this uh, philosophical uh, school, or uh, it can also be explained uh, from the point of view, from the perspective of the uh, Madhyamaka uh, Prasangika uh, system, uh, followed by Ma Master Buddhapalita and Master Chandrakirti and others. And then verse number 23 uh, shows uh, the, the practice of um, you know, uh, meditating on or reflecting on the illusion-like um, uh, um, um, emptiness or uh, during the, the post-meditation session. Mm. Yeah. That is and next comes the practice of the six perfections after having cultivated uh, this altruistic intention of bodhicitta. and so uh, from verse number 25 through to the end of verse number 30, uh, these verses show uh, the practices of the six perfections. Chimilia that Shinne Jig 
kamsum. Yani sakku, samare. Diba? Çene o dosya da kadar samden sunmi ki dinginci duyadı. Cedi, şiraka naba cengkinden hamdun kumiyadı, cidin ver hamdun seyri. Dadi ne dünyi kumiyadı, cidin de ver hamdun seyri. O da de doğu doğu adı kımdi dünyi kumiyadı, sunmuşa, sunmuyari. Çekiyor şiddi. And so, um, in connection with the earlier verses, um, uh, verse number 25 to 29, uh, what uh, they, when, when we would show the six uh, perfections, um, of course, with regards to the practice of uh, g the generosity, for example, um, with, uh, the, there is the, gener uh, the practice of generosity in terms of giving dharma, giving spiritual t uh, instructions, and also uh, giving um, uh, fearlessness or saving uh, people from fear, fearful states, and also there is sometimes it's said giving uh, love. And so these uh, practices are mentioned in connection with uh, the generosity. And so uh, for teachers, for example, when you teach, give instructions and to your uh, students with a, a sense of you know, caring and with a wish to help them, then of course when you give your instructions or advice, they be uh, th it becomes a giving uh, of dharma. And then, of course, with regards to giving um, material, there is also uh, you can practice giving or generosity by giving material things to others. And um, uh, then, uh, um, when when it comes to using technology or developing technology and so forth, you can do so with a motivation to help others and other people and beings to you know uh, save them from uh, dangers and so forth. When you do that, that also becomes uh, the uh, called the practice of giving in terms of giving fearlessness and so in our daily life we can actually integrate these practices of generosity um, uh, uh, um, as best we could and uh, the, uh, in connection with the bodhisattva practice now that the the primary um, practice of bodhisattvas is to do these practices within the understanding with uh, without any kind of a selfish motive at all and then, um, called, um, when it comes to uh, called, uh, so that, that uh, that's about uh, the practice of morality. So to restrain self, any kind of selfish uh, motivation, and then uh, with regard to the uh, cultivation of single-pointed concentration, of course we can. Uh, uh, fix our mind on an object, whatever you, uh, whichever you choose. We can fix our mind on it and then uh, cultivate single-pointed concentration. Now here, with regard to this concentration, the term concentration also comes in uh, in the, uh, the subject, or, or uh, which is uh, the uh, study of mind and mental factors. So uh, in uh, one category of mental factors, which is called uh, the five assets, Attainments or ascertaining factors. Um, the one of them is uh, said to be concentration, single point of concentration. So, of course, even if we not may <laughs> not have. <laughs> <a very Yes. laughs> And so, uh, in the Buddhist uh, psychology, yes. in Buddhist psychology, and particularly in the text written by Master Asanga Arya Asanga, um, he uh, mentions. Uh, in the Abhidharma Samuchaya, 51 categories of mental factors. And so, um, and, called, um, and, and then uh, within these five uh, uh, ascertaining mental factors, um, ascertaining uh, called an object, uh, mental factors ascertaining objects, uh, one of them is this concentration. So even if we may not have a very powerful, you know, uh, uh, concentration whereby we're able to absorb ourselves in a single pointedly on one object I and mean, we still have the potential to develop that kind of thing and so we have the basis for or the seed for that and then what we need to do is put effort and 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 uh, go, uh, strive to develop that kind of absorptive you know, concentration as well. Now, in order to be able to do that, what is necessary uh, are the uh, showing mindfulness on the one hand, where you try to you know, see, I mean, uh, fix your mind on, on one object and not to lose that focus. 
So being able to, you should uh, try to show mindfulness so that you don't lose the focus. And in order to check whether you are actually losing your focus and also whether, uh, you know, any other um, obstacles or hindrances to uh, developing that kind of uh, absorptive med uh, concentration is happening or not, uh, we, we you use what is known as introspection. And so, or sometimes called vigilance within the, that, that, that state. When, when you fix your mind on the focus, you should also, on the, uh, from one corner of mind, see whether you are uh, called, um, called, um, being distracted or uh, whether this mental excitement and mental laxity are also coming uh, in, in your meditation or not. And then try to avoid them or overcome them when they come. And so in this way, um, you should develop this single-pointed concentration, the powerful single-pointed concentration with which you can fix your mind on the chosen focus um, without distraction. And uh, I have some friends who are able to do that, that they are able to stay on one focus single-pointedly for um, uh, a certain period of time. And so with regard to the uh, this uh, is that friend text you see four five hours fully concentrate without discussion distraction a distraction this is reality is it possible oh. actually that person is American <laughs> not Indian <laughs> not Tibetan <laughs> I think yeah at least, I think, 30, 40 years sort of practice. Now, you see, that person you see, can concentrate for us. Then some sort of indication of dissolution now begin to experience like that. And so I really, very, very eager, you see, some sadhus, I do, who spends years in Himalayan mountains, and, and particularly those who sadhus who naked to remain in a high altitude, there must be have sort of a certain sort of as uh, what uh, Chandralini uh, and Kundalini. So they must have a certain uh, deeper experiences. So so far, uh, uh, not not met. The last Mahakumbha Mela, see, I got an invitation. Then I think the last, I think Mahakumbha Mela, and three, three times uh, I had the opportunity to uh, participate there. So, recent <coughs> Mahakumbha Mela, I got an invitation. I, uh, I, I, I already accepted. But the day my flight, weather is very bad in Damsala. And then a few days, postpone, again the day fixed, again very bad weather. So I think Shivaji uh, not, not agree to allow me to go there. <laughs> no. <laughs> Usually I tell you the people, Lord Shivaji, his permanent residence is in Tibet, inside Tibet. So from that viewpoint, uh, he is Tibetan God. Uh, <laughs> Then Buddha come from India, so uh, a Tibet, a Buddhist, Tibetan Buddhist god is Buddha, so that's Indian. Hindu, millions of Hindus god is Tibetan. <laughs> we have very some special unique sort of connection, isn't it, like that. Uh, so, so this time I sent a message, this time I want to meet some of these sadhus who spent years, years in mountain. But then, my visit, you see, did not materialize like that. So really, we need, you see, because uh, of the more sort of meeting, and the interact, and the exchange different experiences, is very essential. Yes. Then, this, uh, ah, this is the last. Oh. 
then, uh, then uh, in terms of cultivating this kind of uh, absorption or, or single point of concentration, I mean, we have texts uh, written by Indian uh, masters like Arya Asanga, and also uh, uh, the text writ uh, written by Master Kamala Shila, uh, which is called the Bhavana Krama. And so um, these texts actually did call explain in great detail about the, uh, the practice or the cultivation of the single point of concentration. And also having done that, then what you develop also is this special insight. And uh, within this insight uh, meditation, there is an insight meditation pertaining to the worldly experience of insight. And then uh, there is a transcendental experience of uh, insight meditation. Um, so worldly ones refer to uh, meditation meditations whereby I mean through which you lead into the uh, higher I mean, realms of existence uh, such as within the three realms of existence uh, yeah, now, which are Kama Dado, Ruba Dado, Aruba Dado. Three realms. And then uh, within these three realms also there's uh, what are called as nine levels. And so you, when you do meditation within this context of uh, developing higher concentration, um, called, uh, leading to higher rib, uh, these uh, planes of existence, then you are doing the, the meditation of uh, called the insight within the worldly realm, whereas the uh, transcendental realm or meditation on uh, of uh, penetrative insight refers to meditation on emptiness. Then, now last, Ranga Triba. Ranga Madana, Chiba Suji, Chimi Chesi Be. Tiji Gyundu Ranga Triba La, Dane Bonga Gyesa La Ni. Nyo Wangi Gyesa Shanda Ge, Nyeba Le Na Dengi Nyam Gyewe, Tepa Chela Shubi Kansa Ge, Nyeba Me Bonga Gyesa La Ni. Nyi Gu Wangi Pinju Tzu Yushin, Tua Song Kombe Chao Nyam Gyewe, Zashi Kim Da Jinda Kim Na La, Chakwa Bonga Gyesa La Ni. Zu Mu Tsi Ge, Shen Sim Chu Juji, Gyewe Sa Ge, Zu Zu Nyam Gyewe, Tiji Shen Ge Yidu Mu Wangi, Tsi Zu Bonga Gyesa La Ni. Nyomukonyembe and so uh, verses 31 to 36. And so in verse number 36, it says, um, In brief, whatever you are doing, ask yourself, what the, what's the state of my mind? With constant mindfulness and mental alertness, uh, accomplish others' good. This is the practice of a bodhisattva. Mm -hmm. of course, these eight verses, uh, since many years, I learned by heart. So whenever I have some sort of kasuda, uh, ka. leisure, ka. Uh, yes, a time, uh, and particularly when I wait at airport or something, wait, and I just recite this and think, think, very good. Otherwise, sometimes you feel impatience and sometimes complain the pilot. 
<laughs> so recite this, I take it that way, then no problem. Uh, so I think you also have the same experience. <laughs> when you reach airport and announce one hour delay, or sometimes cancel, then there's a shop shop down there. One time in Delhi, so suppose I take a flight to Jammu, we, everybody in the, uh, in the plane already was boarding the way, boarded. Then announce cancel because pilot not come. <laughs> like that. So in any way, this eight verses, uh, I don't know, the English contribution or that. No, no. If that's easy, no. then you see these things, you see, worthwhile to learn by heart and then occasionally recite and think that's much more helpful than just a prayer. Pray to God something mysterious, something mystery. <laughs> then these are just, you see, telling how to behave yourself day by day. Much of help. Okay. So now, finished our today's lesson. So perhaps, good night. <laughs> so now, uh, 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 no time to question and answer. But if time permits, then tomorrow, some questions, okay. But at the same time, you see there's some now, some what to call a tantric uh, initiation. So that, uh, that, that also is in need some explanation about the whole structure of tantriyana. Like that. Finish. Uh, we have Mr. Ashok Chopra, who oh? will present a painting to you, Your Holiness. Oh. Oh, very good. Thank you. 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 Very good. Thank you. What do you think? <laughs> this, this of drawing my face more attractive or my, my face more attractive? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>